Hi guys, this is Dr. Hayek and in this video I will be introducing the difference between E1 and E2 beta elimination. An elimination by definition is known as a reaction that produces a pi bond. So here I have pi bond. This reaction happens through an elimination of a hydrogen and a halogen on an alkyl halide and this is known as a dehydrohalogenation. This reaction proceeds in two mechanisms. You have the E1 or the E2. And now I will explain the difference between E1 and E2 and how to determine which mechanism the reaction will undergo. First, if we start with the E2 mechanism, so if I say that this reaction will undergo an E2 mechanism, how this is going to happen? Now, in the presence of a base, the base will just remove the hydrogen, and not any hydrogen. The hydrogen has to be on a beta position of the alkyl halide and that's why we call it beta elimination now how to name carbons as beta carbons so the carbon that is connected directly to the halogen it's named as alpha carbon and the adjacent carbon to it it's named beta carbon now of course if you had another carbon in this side this also could be called a beta carbon now in this case here we have a beta carbon and this is the hydrogen connected to the beta carbon so when the base takes this hydrogen the electrons making the bond between the carbon and hydrogen here will be shared now between these two carbons to make the pi bond and of course now this carbon now will end up with five bonds which is not possible this violates the octet rule and therefore the leaving group which is the halogen will just leave taken this extra electron with it to form the X minus so I said dehydrohalogenation and here I will have plus BH plus plus X minus now as you can see in here for E2 which is similar to the mechanism SN2 the bond forming and bond breaking happens all at the same time so I have a bond forming between the base and hydrogen I have bond breaking between this carbon and hydrogen I have bond forming between carbon and carbon to form the pi bond and I have bond breaking between the carbon and the halogen here so for the E2 mechanism the reaction occurs in one step now for E1 mechanism the reaction happens in two steps similar to SN1 the first step is the formation of the carbocation so the halogen will leave and we will obtain the following carbocation course here plus X minus in the presence of a base the base will take this hydrogen and the electrons forming the bond between the carbon and hydrogen here will be shared between these two carbons to form the pi bond again and therefore this reaction will lead again to the alkene which is the same product as the E2 mechanism now what are the factors or the factor that determines which mechanism the reaction will undergo in a different case to SN1 and SN2 for E1 and E2 only one factor determines the mechanism of the reaction and which is the strength of the base E2 mechanism for example favors strong bases so in this case if this base is strong with this alkyl halide the reaction will undergo an E2 mechanism however if this base is weak the reaction will favor an E1 mechanism now let's discuss the differences and the similarities between E1 and E2 uh, mechanisms 
So we have said E1 mechanisms favor weak bases. So they favor weak bases. However, E2 mechanisms favor strong bases. Strong bases. E1, similar to SN1, it occurs in two steps mechanism. However, E2 occurs in one step, or what we call concerted mechanism. Now, because I have two steps mechanism, I will have two transition states. So the transition states will be written as follow. I will have first the bond breaking between the carbon and the halogen. Okay, so that's the first transition state. Now, I will have delta negative charge on the halogen and delta positive charge on the carbon the second transition state will be the attack of the base on the beta hydrogen so I have this bond between the carbon and hydrogen will break the bond between the base and hydrogen will form and now I have a pi bond here that will form and this is the second transition state and now since E1 mechanisms favor weak bases bases usually will be neutral so here I will have partial positive charge and the positive charge on the carbocation here will start to disappear and therefore I have also a delta positive charge for an E2 mechanism since it happens in one step so I have only one transition state and the transition state will be as follows all bond making and bond breaking happens at the same time now I have bond breaking between the halogen and the carbon here I have bond breaking between the carbon and hydrogen I have bond making between the base and hydrogen and I have a formation of the pi bond here now since now since E2 mechanisms favor strong bases and strong bases usually are charged negatively so the negative charge on the base here will start to disappear and the negative charge on the halogen here will start to appear now since E1 happens in two steps and the first step is the formation of the carbocation which is the rate determining step so the rate law expression will be R equals to K multiplied by the concentration of the alcohol halide so the rate of the E1 elimination depends only on the concentration of the alcohol halide however the rate law expression for an E2 mechanism will depend on both concentrations for the alcohol halide and the base now let's discuss some common factors between E1 and E2 both mechanisms favor better leaving group so a better leaving group better leaving group will give me in both cases faster elimination so it's going to be faster reaction another common factor is that both reactions favor higher degree alcohol halides so a third degree alcohol halide will react faster than a second degree alcohol halide which also will react faster than a first degree alcohol halide and this is common for both eliminations an important remark for E1 mechanism is that no E1 for first degree alcohol halide and this is due to the highly unstable carbocation that will form from first degree alcohol halide.